It is now in order to consider amendment number seven, printed in House Report 116-289. For what purpose does a gentleman from Hawaii seek recognition? Mr. Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number seven, printed in House Report number 116-289, offered by Mr. Case of Hawaii. Pursuant to the House Resolution 695, the gentleman from Hawaii, Mr. Case, and the member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Hawaii. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise today in support of my amendment to confirm that Native Hawaiians and Alaska Natives are included for the purposes and considerations of the U.S. Export Finance Agency's new Office of Minority and Women Inclusion. I'm very proud to be joined in offering this amendment by my friend and colleague, the Dean of this House, a gentleman from Alaska, Mr. Young. In reauthorizing the Ex-Im Bank of the United States, H.R. 4863 would create an Office of Minority and Women Inclusion for the new U.S. Export Finance Agency. This office would be responsible for engaging with minority-owned and women-owned businesses in the program, contracts, and activities of the agency. This includes outreach to those businesses to ensure their awareness of the export assistance provided by the agency. The laudable policy goal of this office is to increase access to export assistance and foster overall business for underrepresented communities. However, H.R. 4863 currently uses references to Section 1204C of the Financial Institutions Reform, Recovery, and Enforcement Act of 1989, which defines, quote, minority, unquote, as, quote, any black American, Native American, Hispanic American, or Asian American. Because of the unique statuses that Native Hawaiians and Alaska Natives have and the complexities of federal law, the term, quote, Native American, unquote, is not always understood to include Native Hawaiians and Alaska Natives. My amendment is a simple clarification that, for the purposes of the agency and its Office of Minority and Women Inclusion, those groups are included, as they are for many other comparable federal programs. Adopting this amendment ensures that Native Hawaiian-owned and Alaska Native-owned businesses will be part of the agency's outreach efforts and have greater opportunity to benefit from the agency's export assistance. In my home state of Hawaii, Native Hawaiian-owned businesses are an, are an essential part of our economy, but this is also true in countless other communities throughout our country. According to the 2012 survey of business owners, there are almost 26,000 Native Hawaiian-owned businesses in the United States, employing over 20,000 people. Improving outreach to Native Hawaiian-owned businesses by the agency provides these businesses the chance to grow and expand opportunities for the families and communities they support, not just in Hawaii, but across the country. Native Hawaiian-owned businesses contribute to the economies of every single state and the District of Columbia. Nearly half of those businesses operate outside of Hawaii. These statistics demonstrate the involvement of Native Hawaiian businesses in our business communities, but they also do not adequately give voice to the extent to which their businesses contribute to the overall empowerment of Native Hawaiian communities. Nor do such numbers tell the story of the countless lives that have been improved and the community strengthened as a result of their innovation and entrepreneurship. <coughs> Everything that I have said here today applies equally to Alaska Natives, as I'm sure Mr. Young would be quick to point out. This amendment will ensure that the reauthorized agency will help Native Hawaiian-owned and Alaska Native-owned businesses pursue new business opportunities, support American jobs across the country, and sustain and enrich the communities they support as will be the case for other minority and women-owned business, businesses. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves his time. For what purpose does the gentleman from North Carolina rise? I uh, wish to claim time in opposition, but I'm not opposed. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for five Thank minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me say, first, Republicans unanimously voted for the waters McHenry bipartisan deal to strengthen the bank and combat Chinese aggression but we're not going to support this bipartisan, uh, this partisan bill. Um, I would note that the amendment uh, offered here uh, clarifies the definition of minorities under the section of the bill that was a priority for the chair of our committee, uh, Chairwoman Waters, um, uh, which is the Office of Minority and Women Inclusion, which is uh, referred to as an OMWI. I would just note that in this bill, the Democrats have prioritized OMWIs over the global economic and national security threats posed by China and even Russia. Um, we are important, that's, it's fine. Um, 
we included that in the bipartisan bill, and that was part of the trade-off of a bipartisan bill, is uh, including something that was a priority for Chairwoman Waters. But also in that agreement were provisions that were tough on China. I thought it was a fair trade uh, uh, it, it, in order to get a bipartisan bill. Amwees are, are and, um, and tough on China are, are uh, not mutually exclusive uh, ideas. Uh, but my colleagues on the other side of the aisle felt that they needed to prioritize, and so they chose Omwis as opposed to uh, a rational uh, stance against Chinese aggression or even Russian actions. So to the extent that Mr. Case's amendment clarifies language that will have no impact and will not be enacted anyway, I don't oppose it. And with that, a reserve. Does the gentleman from North Carolina reserve? Reserve. Yeah, thank you. Gentleman from Hawaii. Uh, from Hawaii is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate very much, uh, in, in the middle of, uh, of, of the remarks of my colleague, I uh, certainly heard and detected uh, support for this amendment, and I also appreciate that. I appreciate my colleague and the minority uh, recognizing the importance of minority and women-owned businesses throughout our country and their contributions uh, to our export uh, community. Uh, and this is certainly consistent with my colleagues' uh, earlier comments uh, that they fully support uh, the provisions of, of this bill that uh, do, in fact, uh, recognize uh, that uh, disadvantaged communities throughout our country often need uh, extra assistance. Again, as I said earlier, this is consistent uh, very much with, uh, with, with um, other federal programs. And I would certainly, to the gentleman's comments about uh, China Rush and Ch Russia and other countries, uh, emphasize that in this particular area, uh, the more American businesses that can, can participate uh, in export-related activities throughout the world, uh, the better we will all be in this country with respect to our relations with uh, these other countries. I yield the balance of my time. Gentleman yields. Gentleman and from North Carolina is recognized. With that, I yield myself the remaining of my time. Uh, and I would say to my colleague, yes, it's important that we have robust global trade. Exam at its height, it's its strongest year, uh, supported just shy of 2% of American exports. I don't want to diminish to a little less than 2%, but uh, the, most export is, is done uh, through the private sector without a government uh, program like XM. I would also say that as a matter of our national interest, we shouldn't be subsidizing Chinese foreign policy with one belt, one road. We shouldn't be subsidizing their island building in the Pacific. We shouldn't be subsidizing their actions in Hong Kong. So that's what we negotiated with the waters McHenry bipartisan bill. So I am disappointed that we, we are not dealing with that policy, and instead of uh, the majority decided to go the partisan route, uh, which, uh, you know, the. Republican leader, the majority leader of the Senate has already said, is dead on arrival. The president said he's going to veto this bill. So we could have gone through a bipartisan route with a bipartisan outcome, but they chose a different route. And look, the majority is the majority. They have the votes to go do what they want to do, but that means that I don't need to vote for bad policy uh, just to get along. That's why I try to negotiate a good bill, and that's why we had a good bill. So with that, um, support the amendment. and. Uh, would yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. The gentleman from North Carolina yields. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Hawaii. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to.